Hi, how's everyone doing today? I hope everyone's having a good day so far. So I've been seeing a lot of these posters online and I kind of wanted to create this effect. Um, I really like this because it has like a border connecting to a script font. I thought it was really neat how it kind of helps emphasize what's going on uh, in the image rather than kind of take control of it. So it's a really good uh, effect to add more support or asset to the image itself. So I want to be able to recreate this and show you guys how to do it. So let's head into Photoshop. So heading over to Photoshop, let's create our canvas. I'm going to set it to a width of 1280 and a height of 720 in pixels. Uh, orientation of horizontal and a resolution of 300 with an RGB color mode. Once that's done, you're going to want to hit create. And I'm going to unlock my background layer just for my own habit. Then I'm going to go over to pixels. This will be in the description with a link. And I'm going to copy this image of an elephant. It was made by Pixabay. So once that's complete, I'm just going to paste it using control V. Remember that if you are on Mac, you're going to be wanting using the command key. So I zoomed out using control minus uh, hitting control T. I'm just going to shrink down my image and I'm just going to shrink it to the point where only um, the left and right borders are connected. It doesn't matter for me on the top or the bottom if I get a little bit of cut. So once that's complete, I've centered the image and I'm going to hit enter um, zoom in with control plus. And I'm gonna start getting my canvas ready. So I'm just gonna delete the background layer and we're only gonna be using this canvas. So our next step is gonna involve putting in our font. And so the font I'm gonna be using today is called Karmic District. It's a free monoline font available from Pixel Surplus. So it's a great monoline font. Any monoline font will do for this type of effect. So this one was made by Jeremy Visay of Hustle Company Co. and Alex Joganek. So it's an amazing font in my personal opinion. It's made for personal and desktop commercial use. So if you do check it out, make sure to give them a like. It really does help. So moving on, we're going to go to our text tool. I'm going to be using Garment District. I'm going to make sure it's set to white. And I want the size to be 40. And I'm just going to spell out elephant in the font. And I'm just going to put it in the middle. I'm going to go back to my text tool, click this little icon to warp the text, and I'm going to give it a weight. I'm going to leave it at 50%, and I'm going to hit OK, and that's going to cover our font. Next thing we're going to be doing is adding our border, and so our border, it's going to be a rectangle. I'm going to make sure the fill is set to zero. Our stroke is set to white, and I'm going to make sure that our stroke weight is going to be set to eight. So once that, you can finally just start creating it. It doesn't matter what size it is, because we are going to just kind of be as we go along and then add some more options to the stroke i'm going to make sure the alignment is out the caps are rounded and the corners to also be rounded there we go so that's going to set our border and now our next steps are just going to be connecting to kind of start the preliminary process i'm going to select my text layer hit Control t and i'm just going to adjust where i want the text to be you can ignore the border for now because we're going to be moving that accordingly so i want that to be on the top left corner and I'm going to hit enter. So now our next step is going to involve adjusting our border so that it starts to connect with our lettering. So I'm going to select our rectangle layer. And then I'm going to just hit control T on my computer. And I'm going to hit control plus just to zoom in. If you hold space bar on your keyboard, you can kind of move around the canvas. On the mouse. So I'm going to hold on shift while I adjust it. So it adjusts um, a single uh, vertical or horizontal as opposed to is resizing proportionately. So I'm going to move this a little bit. There you go. Once it starts to connect to the T. And for this one, I want it to kind of connect as a straight line to this part right here. And there you go. So once that's complete, we have that kind of a little bit of lined. And next, what I'm going to be doing is just adding a layer mask to our rectangle. Going to my brush tool by pressing B, make sure it's set to hardness of zero and it's set to black. And I can just start erasing parts of uh, border that's going overlapping. So when I'm doing this, I'm just erasing parts of it that. So I only want the E to be connected and the T. I'll leave it like that. If you want to be more precise, you can always do a editing. So it's good for me for now. So we started the initial process of connecting them and now it's time to just do a little bit of cleanup. So the T looks good. Um, if you would like, you could always, here's a hot tip, put a new layer, go to your brush tool, make sure it's set to white. And I'll just keep 
significant and you can always just add a little bit of a curve kind of help blend it in like that as opposed to a straight corner so it helps blend in a little bit more now for the e what i'm going to be doing since i don't want it to just be connected like this i want it to look a little bit more natural for the e i'm going to be going to my text layer adding a mask making sure it's at the black and i'm just going to erase the conjoining parts here so it looks like it's breaking apart here then I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to switch this to white. And with my brush still being there, I'm just going to create a circle right here and kind of click three times and then just connect, connect it downwards. And there you go. That will give me that rounded edge look. And there you go. So we still got the, it still looks like the E, but it's not connected a little bit more naturally. It looks a lot uh, better in my opinion than it just being connected into a straight line. So that's going to be how we can join the border and the text. So now in this step, we're going to start to give the border a little bit more depth. So we're going to go back to our rectangle and we're going to make sure the mask is selected. We're going to hit control plus and zoom in. And we're going to head over to this tree right here. So what I'm going to be doing is deleting parts of the border to make it look like this border is underneath the tree. So I'm going to go to my brush tool, make sure it's set to um, B on my keyboard. I'm going to set the hardness to set to zero. Make sure it's set to black so it can erase parts of it. And I'm going to shrink it down with my brackets. And all you're going to want to do is just start erasing parts like this. The more time you take on it, the better it'll look. I'm just going to go for the sake of time. There we go. And you can zoom out and see how it looks. Now it's kind of looking like it's underneath it. So right after that, we're going to create a layer above it and immediately right click and create clipping mask. Next, what we're going to do is go to our brush tool again. Make sure if you still have it selected, make sure it's at the black back and do kind of do the same thing when we did when we were racing it but this time we're gonna make it so it looks like it has a shadow so, then like that you could do a rough one because we're gonna be blurring it and kind of blending it a little bit more like that once that's good to go you can go to blur Gaussian blur and blur it with about 10 pixels and if you ever still think it's too dark you could always edit it um I'll set mine to 80 just to give it a slight one there you go so that's pretty much gonna be the entire effect as I'm talking right now, I'll put up some more examples because the only difference in this effect is going to be kind of what words you use or what letters you're going to have to connect with the borderline itself. If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer. If you guys got stuck in a certain situation, let me know. I'll do my best to respond in the comments as well. Or if you just in general think that there's a better way you could have done it, because I know sometimes there's one way or multiple ways to do one thing. So let me know what you guys think and have a good rest of your day. Okay.